Hey everybody, I'm Megan Hatcher Mays, Director of Democracy Policy here at Indivisible, and welcome back to another delightful edition of Impeachment Daily. Uh, as you know, Impeachment Daily exists to demystify, hopefully, the impeachment process to answer your questions and let you know how you can stay involved in this fight. And it is gearing up to be quite the fight, is it not? Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about with our first segment, which I'm calling What Just Happened? Where we recap what we know so far. We actually uh, covered a lot of ground this week. And one thing I've learned from doing this every day is that it's very easy to fall into various rabbit holes and entertain all sorts of conspiracy theories. But, and we do this show every day so that we can get into the weeds a little bit about um, the, the whole process. But one thing I think we should just continue to keep in mind is just the facts as we know them. Like the most important fact that we know, that Trump did it and he confessed like multiple times into a camera. So if this is gonna get wilder and wilder and we'll just, let's just keep a focus on that while we're learning as much as we can about what's happening. So, because yeah, this week was a, like a bad spy novel. Um, on Monday, we talked about Rudy Giuliani, who for some reason is still kicking around. Uh, it turns out he's been very deeply involved in this Ukraine scandal and was even having what appears to be high-level diplomatic conversations with leaders there, even though he does not work for the State Department and is not a federal employee. He's just Trump's personal lawyer. He's not a very good one, but he is. Uh, we, but we talked about how Trump likes to deploy henchmen like Giuliani because he sows a lot of confusion and it helps Trump to deflect responsibility when Rudy goes rogue. Uh, on Tuesday, we talked about news from the Turkey-Syria border where Trump is apparently abandoning some critical allies in that region by withdrawing US troops from, from the area. There are definitely responsible ways to end longstanding conflicts, but it does not appear that what Trump is doing is particularly responsible. Um, it's also not clear what's motivating this decision, but we know that the removal of US troops from Turkey and Syria had the effect of making lots of senators mad, Democrats and Republicans, by the way, guys like Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell, longtime besties with Trump, I cannot stress this enough, the dumbest possible strategy to alienate senators, like all 100 senators are about to serve as jurors in your impeachment trial, Donald? What are you doing? But hey, he didn't stop there, right? He then later in the week sent a letter, the White House sent a letter to Congress refusing to cooperate in any way whatsoever with this ongoing impeachment inquiry, which sounds a lot like, what's the word I'm looking for? obstruction, which itself could be an impeachable offense. So that letter represented the clearest evidence yet that we're gearing up for a big time constitutional crisis, which is when, we talked about this, when different branches of government are at war with each other and then neither side wants to back down. So that means that this will almost certainly end up in the courts, which is a super scary thought given that Trump has been wildly successful at stacking the judiciary with conservative ideologues who are friendly to his presidency. You know, th these are guys like Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. These are the guys that are gonna decide on these types of cases. But that's why Trump is hiring yet more lawyers. Uh, yesterday we talked about Trey Gowdy, remember him? He led the Benghazi probe former Republican congressman, former federal prosecutor, but most importantly to Trump, former Fox News contributor, Trey Gowdy. Uh, he, when Obama was president, Gowdy cared a lot about the executive branch complying with congressional requests for documents. Now, not so much. I wonder what's changed. That was so much stuff to happen in one week, and I regret to inform you that there's even more. That brings us to our next segment, which I'm calling, What is Happening? Where we talk about recent developments in the impeachment process. So earlier this week, we talked about a guy named Gordon Sondland. He is currently the ambassador to the European Union, but for some reason is lurking around Ukraine even though Ukraine is not part of the European Union. So, okay, Gordon. Uh, we talked about him, though, because he was set to testify in the House earlier this week about his involvement in this big scandal in Ukraine. 
but at the last minute, Trump pulled him, right? Trump ordered him not to testify. So we still haven't heard directly from Sondland about who all said what during this phone call and before and after too. But there's someone else that the committees who are handling the impeachment inquiry want to hear from. And in fact, they did hear from her today. Her name is Marie Yovanovitch, and she's the former ambassador of uh, to Ukraine, sorry. And she successfully testified in front of the House this morning. So here's why her testimony is uh, really, really important. Um, Yovanovitch is a career diplomat, which means uh, she worked for the State Department under lots of different presidents, uh, Democrats and Republicans. She was confirmed to uh, the ambassadorship to Ukraine in 2016, and Obama was president then, but she was confirmed with bipartisan support. But she was recalled from her post in May of this year by Trump, uh, apparently at the urging of his son, Don Jr. Don't know why he's involved in this. And, oh, I know why he is. He's the smart one. Don Jr. is the smart one, of course. But of course, Rudy Giuliani too was involved in this. He's always somehow around. And it's becoming clear that Yovanovitch was recalled from her post because she was insufficiently supportive of the Trump administration's policies in Ukraine, which seem to kind of start and end with digging up dirt on domestic political rivals. So that phone call that Trump had with the um, president of Ukraine that's at the center of this whole scandal happened about two months after uh, Yovanovitch was recalled. And Trump actually brought her up on the call. I mean, he didn't, I mean, he called her the woman uh, and said she was bad news. But he also said that she's going to go through some things. And guess what? Rudy Giuliani put her through some things. He started like a public smear campaign against her, tried to tie her, baselessly tie her to conspiracy theories involving Paul Manafort. So you can see how important it is to hear from Yovanovitch, right? It's really important for the House to get some information from her because we need to know like what sorts of interactions did she have with Rudy Giuliani? What sorts of interactions did she have with uh, members of Trump's cabinet on Ukraine? Um, we don't have a full readout yet of her testimony, but we know based on early reports that she said that she was, quote, incredulous, that she was removed from her post, and that her removal was, quote, based, as far as I can tell, on unfounded and false claims by people with clearly questionable motives. And it's not too hard to imagine who she's talking about there, right? So this testimony is a big deal and is very strong supporting evidence of Trump's impeachable conduct. So we expect Yovanovitch's statements to be a critical, critical part of drafting the articles of impeachment against Trump that the House will ultimately vote on. So whew, let's take a breath and let's just focus on how we can continue to stay involved because it's getting messy. I mean, it's already messy, but it's gonna get messier, I think. So. Recess is coming to an end and you all did an incredible job registering events, attending town halls, talking to members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans. Excellent, excellent job. Congress is coming back into, se into session next Tuesday, but you can still go to impeachnow.org and look at for events or register events over the weekend before they come back. And that website is gonna continue to be a resource for you with um, action kits and things like that that you can use. Uh, you can also Im text IMPEACH to 97779 and we can send you some more information. And as always, thank your Democratic members for supporting impeachment and make sure you are reaching out to your Republican members, inviting them to join this fight for the very soul of our nation. This fight is winnable if we keep showing up and I absolutely know that you will. So thank you so much for tuning in. Quick program note, there will be no episode of Impeachment Daily uh, on Monday in observance of Indigenous, Pe Indigenous Peoples Day, but we will see you back here on Tuesday. Thank you so much. <laughs>